हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यू आर गुड इन दिस वीडियो सी प्रॉब्लम चूज के एलिमेंट्स विद मैक्सिमम सम नेक्स्ट वीडियो इज आल्सो कमिंग सून सो दिस प्रॉब्लम सिंपली सेज दैट यू आर गिवन टू इंटीजर एरेज नम्स वन एंड नम्स टू एज यू कैन सी नम्स वन एंड नम्स टू एरेज आर गिवन टू यू नाउ बोथ आर ऑफ फिक्स लेंथ एंड अलॉन्ग विद अ पॉजिटिव इंटीजर के वी विल सी व्हाट्स द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ के इज सून सो व्हाट वी हैव टू डू इज फॉर ईच इंडेक्स आई बेसिकली फॉर इन द एंटायर एरे व्हिच वी हैव वी हैव टू फाइंड ऑल इंडेक्सेस जे where nums of i is less than sorry nums of j is less than nums of i so obviously imagine that uh, you know you have this thing 4 2 1 5 3 so let's say if i is this so what are all the possible values of j j is this one this one or this one why because the value of j is less than the value of i so let's say if i is this so what are all the possible values of j j is this one this one or this one why because the value is smaller right so this is one this is the first point second point is choose at most k values of nums 2 of j at these indexes to maximize the total sum so this is right now nums 1 so this is right now nums 1 but he is saying that take the nums 2 array and then nums 2 array and then at the jth locations i have 20 30 and 50 20 30 and 50 i can choose at most k values so out of these i can choose at most two values such that what such that i can maximize my sum obviously we know that in a simple math if we have two numbers we want to maximize their sum we will want that both of them should be as max as possible so what i will do i will try that 30 and 50 i will choose because i know that these will be you know maximum ones so if i just add the maximum number i will get the maximum sum as well so and again if we look at the constraints okay my constraints i have removed it but yeah uh, if we look at the constraints then we will realize that uh, we have to achieve this thing because again my n is around 25 so we have to achieve that in o of n log n or maybe o of n we cannot go o of n square right that's the like that's the thing or not even o of n into k because k was also 25 so we have to look for that we are looking for o of n plus k or maybe o of n log n plus k log n or something that sort like it can never go o of n into k or something so uh for this as you can see that you have to repeat that process for all the indexes so when i is here you will see possible values of j then because of that you will choose k topmost ones and then you will take a summation that is 80 then repeat the same process what is the same process now my i is let's say 2 if my i is 2 and again did you see the one interesting fact here that whenever whatever your i is your j can be before it also or after it also because j is defined for nums of 1 such that all the elements are lesser than nums of 5 can it be j no can it be j yes can it be j no no okay now what are all the possible values of your nums of 2 it is only this one which is 30 so i will just put only 30 and again i was asked to take only two values so i can take only one so i'll just take this one so my answer is 30 same way if i repeat this process so let's say if i take my i is here now there is no one which is smaller than nums of i so there is no possible j as such you know like there is no possible j so there is no possible j there is no nums of 2 which is a good candidate for my current nums of i thus answer is 0 same way if i take the last one let's you know last one is an example i will have this as i i have all possible j values so i'll put all possible j values which is 10 20 30 and 50 and then i simply realized oh i i'll take highest two so i'll take 50 and 30 my value will be 80 so this is how i will go about it now you must have easily seen that in a brute force approach which is a very basic approach you will iterate on all the indexes o of n for each index you will ultimately be getting you know all the smaller values you might sort it or do whatever you want which means you know you have these n elements in many let's say again in worst case let's say n elements are many so you will sort them in log n and take the summation of last k elements and log n plus k so for each individual element i am repeating this process so the brute force time complexity will be o of n square log n plus k and that is my brute force and obviously as i mentioned n is 25 so this will not work so i have to think of something in terms of you know n log n or maybe o of n now how can we go about it let's break it down and let's take step by step so firstly we realized that let's make things a bit easier that if i am at i i should be able to look at one direction because see did you see that if i was at this i i was looking you know previously also and after also so make things you need unit direction so that it's easy to compute because if you know in programming you go from left to right you know you run your for loop or any loop you go from left to right thus it is easy such that for any i index maybe i can use my information in the 
previous whatever I have done so far. And that is the strategy we usually use in 99% of the problems. So that is the reason it gives us a hint of sorting it. So I will simply sort it out. I will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this is a very interesting fact in sorting. What is the interesting fact? Interesting fact in sorting is that your question demanded, your question demanded that you have to go on to every i. And for me, i at value 4 will say, okay, technically this 4 is value i, which means this is index 0. So whenever I am at this specific 4, or I, sh I should say this index 0, although you will see the sorted index is something different, but I'm saying the original index. Why I need original index is because my result array is directly linked with this original index. So I will have to store the original index as well. So what I will do, okay, I'll have to store the original index. So I stored zero here, then obviously one here, then two here, then three here, and then four here. This is the original index, which I have. And next one was the nums of one value. But is it enough? Technically not, because if you remembered that even if let's say you are on any specific i, the j values which you have taken are the indexes of the smaller ones. So technically j is this one, but you are taking the actual values of nums of two. So nums of two should also be parallelly sorted. You know, nums of two, again, when I say sorted, I mean, you know, whatever the values at index two, just put it here. So I just say that, you know, let's put the values directly, all of them, and then I will just put it one by one. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So I'll simply do the same thing. So I will say that at index two, I have, let's say if I put it next to here, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, at index 2, I have 30, at index 1, I have 20, at index 4, I have, uh, you know, 3 and 4, I have 50, at index 0, I have 10, at index 3, I have 40. So now you will see that this is the ultimate game, which is much more simpler to traverse to and start my process. So, and again, did you see one thing, what, what happened so far? So far, we combined let's say we make an element you know each element of i is combination of these three things which is my nums of i nums of one of i and secondly was my nums of two of i and my index now again rn you might rn why have you put up the nums of one of i first because if you remember my primary goal or primary thing for sorting was on nums of one of i that is what we see you know up, up just before it so after putting every element, you know, like this in a vector, a vector of array, we will sort it on the basis of nums of one of i, and then we will achieve something of this sort. Now, now when something of this sort is achieved, let's, our job becomes much more easier. How? Let's see. Let's say now I am starting at this specific index i. If I am at this i, I know that j will be all the ones which are previous. There are no j's. Okay. Simply move on. Move on. Okay. Go on to the next index. But again, you might say, Arin, but what about this thing? We will see that when we will see what is the requirement. Requirement will generate the data structures. So far, we just saw only sorting happened on the basis of nums one of i for the specific vector of array. But now let's start off with the simple stuff that how we'll go about. Okay, now I am at index one, right? Make sure that these are the indexes of the original because my result, result, result is based on the original. So for index two, there was answer as zero. So I just say for index two, the answer is zero. That is the reason I needed this index. Now I am at, at this index. So in this previous past, in this previous past, my task is specifically on nums two, give me, give me top k element sum. So obviously, did you, did you see that top k, uh, top k concept? Obviously you must have clicked about heap. If you haven't clicked about heap, please make sure that you have watched the, or you must have done the practice problem sheet of your heap itself. If I go down, heap, 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 heap. Okay, stack, queues, math, number theory, binary, search, link list. Yeah, heap. So I'm hoping that you must have done heap. Again, there are many problems here. So please make sure that you have done five, six problems and you will see the normal concept of heap lies in that, okay, top here. So with that heap, you want top k elements sum, which means that if you have any, you know, you have your heap in which first question will be, will you keep a max heap or a min heap? That's a question. And again, I'll ask you to please answer it. Pause the video and answer right now, because that's the biggest thing, which many people are con confused. 
you might say i didn't have to create top key element sum which means i have to store the maximum element so i should keep a max heap this is my this is what your thought might be but your task is to store you know keep keep top or keep highest or max max key elements so heap is used to remove something as fast as possible which means in log n time so my task was to keep maximum element technically removing the other smaller element so removing something and removing what removing the minimum element so my task is primarily to remove key or oh sorry to like to remove small elements such that the internal remaining elements are max elements and that's the reason i will have to use a min heap such that whenever my size grows beyond k i will simply remove the minimum elements now let's come on back now we know that we will use a simple min heap okay let's proceed forward so right now i will have a min heap in which the value is 30 so far and then okay let's proceed forward okay i have 30 values so far in my min heap now you might say arin uh, so i will i will get out all the values in my min heap and then take a summation of it no i cannot do that because if i do that for every index i will be taking o of k time and thus it will give me o of n to k time which is also not feasible because both n and k are unified so i will maintain the sum i will maintain the sum current sum of this min heap and whenever any push or pop happens from this min heap i will update my sum also parallelly so when i was at the previous step which means when my i was here before i go on to the next index i i simply pushed my current element in my min heap okay then i proceeded forward which means now my i is here i will simply check my min heap for you know maximum sum it will say 30 i'll say awesome bro 30 is my sum so my answer for index 1 will be 30 will be 30 now i will proceed forward but as i mentioned before proceeding forward your i make sure that you put this thing in your min heap obviously i'll put it in my min heap and i'll say 20 is here now and as i put something in my min heap i'll also increase my sum with that push which is increased by 50 now my i is here if my i is here now i am at this index i'll simply ask my min heap not bro Uh, are you good he will say yes bro i am uh, 50 sum so for in value 4 for uh, you know uh, corresponding index 4 my answer is 50 and that is also there now as i proceed forward i will simply push 50 in the min heap so 50 is push but as i push 50 i will also increase the sum it will become 100 but as i push 50 as well i realize the size of min heap exceeded my k and obviously which means i should end up removing the smaller element so i'll remove the smaller element until my size becomes k and obviously i can just simply remove one so now my sum will also be reduced by 20 so you see one element inserted one element removed simple that's what exactly is happening and every time some element is being inserted or removed i am making sure that my min heap is also being impacted now my sum is this now this is also uh, uh, you know k of size k i'll simply now, now can move on now for index 0 What's the answer? Answer is whatever I have, which is eighty. So I'll say okay for my index zero, answer is eighty. System. Okay, great, awesome. Now, but as I move on forward, I have to make sure that I put this inside my min heap. So I'll put that inside my min heap ten. But as I pushed it, I have to make sure that I increase my answer by ten. But obviously, the size again became more than k. Remove the minimum one. So I'll remove the minimum one again. Remove and make it eighty. Now, as this is eighty. So for index three, the answer is eighty. For index three, answer is eighty, and again, uh, answer is eighty. Simply proceed forward. But obviously, before that, insert this value, insert forty. So I'll simply sorry, I'll simply insert forty here. But size again, uh, again, when I insert a forty, it will become one twenty. But obviously, again, uh, the size has become more than k. Make sure that you remove it. So I'll remove thirty. So I'll, it becomes ninety, and then I will simply move on to the next index. Now again, it is ended. So this is my corresponding result. Answer has also been built. and that's your ultimate case so you see that with this strategy you were maintaining a heap of size k thus insertion deletion will be k log k happening you simply did it on all the elements n but you did sorting as well so it will be n log n thus obviously you are ab able to achieve the answer in o of n log n plus k log k let's see the code firstly i made a vector of elements which is having nums1 nums2 and the corresponding index and we saw that why we need all of them then we will sort it which will take your n log n time right and then i will have my priority queue which is a min heap 
then I will take a sum which will maintain the current sum of your min heap because I will maintain a running sum of min heap. Then I'll go on to all the elements. Again, ignore this line. I'll come on to later on. But technically, it will say that for the current, you know, if you if you remember, for any current index, whatever is the uh, what is whatever is the sum so far, simply put that sum as your result of this result of this value, which is index three. Answer answer is your sum. I'll do same thing that result of index which I have and this is the actual index which I have if you remember this is the actual index which I have I'll put that put the put that as sum again ignore this for right now I'll just come back to it on but as soon as I have put the result I have to make sure that I will, I will push the current element which is nums of 2 in my main heap I'll obviously add its impact as well if the size becomes more than equal to k make sure you have to remove the smallest element from the main heap and also remove from the heap itself and remove its impact from the sum and then keep on repeating this process and ultimately you will have your result which is being populated here now come on to the, this case like this line what is this Arin? what is this you 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 did not show that in dry run yes i did not show it because the example did not ask for it so this ultimately says that if you go back onto your main question you will see there's one specific case find all the indexes j where nums one of j is less than nums one of i so if you are at specific i right let's 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 come up, come back here so if i say if i am at specific i right and i have to check for nums one of j which is less than nums one of i so i is here i cannot go and check if, if let's say again if let's say again if i just remove these indexes right now for for god's sake if i remove these okay, yeah let's let's remove these so if i have three here as well i cannot take this three this j is not counted j is the one which is smaller not equal to so it is the case that if the values are equal they are not counted as a smaller value so technically still my result should be counted up till this point only which means that whenever my i was here for the first time whenever my i was here for the first time whatever result was founded that result only should be copied for this this which means whenever the i was here whatever the result was founded the same should be copied here and again, uh, this will help me to, you know, just get rid of the entire concept of going around and you know, checking all that stuff. That is the entire logic which we have in the if condition that if the values are same, you know, nums1 values are same, obviously you can simply copy the result. So whatever I have the result of the previous step, I'll simply copy the result right now as well. Because I know that I cannot compute the result yet and that is the reason i will simply copy the result because i only wanted the result when it was for the first time came up because before that i will have things already and that i have already computed for three so for three itself this thing which i have done still 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 should be copied and again if there is no like you know the elements are not duplicate for example three and the next is four obviously i will compute the corresponding sum whichever i have and whichever i have stored and that's what my answer is cool i hope you guys liked it again as we saw that this process this heap takes only k elements so it will take k log k time in total in total i'm saying this is in total not this specific thing in total it's taking k log k time and obviously uh you will you know run this entire process it will take over one time and this push will take log k time uh this pop will take, take log k time but entirely heap process is taking log k log k time and the sorting will take n log n time thus my time will be o of n log n plus k log k and again space if you see that you will obviously making a new array you know your result sorry not result but you are making your new elements vector which is of size n so it will be n into 3 for the elements vector and your heap will be of size k which is o of k and that is your space and time complexity cool i hope you guys liked it make sure that we hit the like target of 100 likes and goodbye take care bye bye